Look in my eyes for my mind state. I'm on the grind 25, hey. Money on my mind, that's how I play. If you got it now, this what I say. Twenty-seven, dog. Twenty-seven, episode twenty-seven, Swerve City Podcast. I forget every week, but here we are, y'all. Episode Eddie George. Uh, yeah, Eddie George. Yeah, Titans. Shout out to the Titans, man. Yeah, what's another number twenty-seven? Famous number twenty-seven athlete out there. Uh, you mm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think. Don't ask us. Don't ask us. <laughs> <laughs> You're a uh, soccer player. Soccer you, players. Is there, is, 27 is not a very common uh, number. What are the common seven. numbers in soccer? Seven. Seven? Seven, ten, one, obviously, goalkeepers. Is it? Yeah, yeah the goalkeepers always. Well, it's any single digits would be goalkeepers, right? Um, well, ones, yeah. Or? Well, the one is always the main goalkeeper. Okay. Right? Yes. But anyway, um, welcome back. Swerve City Podcast, man. We got a really special one coming. We got... The NXT Tag Champs right here. Imperium, Fabian, Marcel. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Thank you very Thank much for having you. us. Thank you. Thank you. These are my brothers from overseas. Hell yeah. From across the pond. Exactly. Hell yeah. Coming through here. Man, these are some of the most cultured people I know. Because I'm like, yo, how do you know about all the... Yo, some of the music now is they get on? Yeah. We're going to have fun with this one. Okay, good, good, so Before good, we get good, into this, good. we got to do a shout out. Actually, first of all, we got what you been up to, dog? Well... First thing, um, I want to I want to give a shout out to everybody that's been supporting the music, that has been supporting the grind. We've been in the studio working hard on our next project, uh, GPS slash Erica Sun. It is a double disc. If you guys have not seen the announcements announcements on social media, it is kind of like the Love Below speaker box. You are getting a, com- uh, a con- conglomerate of a group album. Uh, Erica Sun album from myself, the group album GPS from me and my brother right here. You are getting a whole 20 track project, and it is amazing. The stuff that has been in the studio has been some of the best music, the best music I've made in my life. I say that every album because I feel that way, <laughs> and uh, you know, you're supposed to say that too. And uh, you know, it feels it feels amazing. Also, uh, the you know, uh, really quick, uh, Mike, if you have that graphic, really quick, I want to make a quick announcement. That uh, January of of twenty twenty one, I will be back and legally be able to in the state of Florida be able to make my sp- motivational speaking tours again. It is something uh, I've been going to school for communication off and on for my communications degree for the past ten years. I know I could have just gone and get it done, but life happens, and you know you got to get stuff, other stuff done, other things gotten away, like having twenty five kids. But yeah. outside of that, <laughs> um, you know, uh, I'm very, very proud and feel very, very happy to be getting back there. Hopefully, the earliest I can get back into the schools is January twenty twenty one. Shout out to Jessica Lorenzo for hooking me up. There was three goals I had in my life I wanted to do, which was make music, be involved in the wrestling game, and motivational speaking. I finally got a door open to be able to get back into the classrooms. Uh, for anybody who's wondering, my, my range group will be between 6th and 12th grade. I love you little kids. I love you little kids, but I do not have the... No. My curriculum ain't that. <laughs> so 6th um, to 12th grade, uh, I will be speaking to. Uh, it'll be probably a weekly. I'll probably do two or three speeches a week and during the days. And um, I can't wait to get back to it. That is a speech I did a couple years ago. And um, I can't wait to get back. So thank you guys. And support. Follow me at TZ Scott to follow like that a, journey. You're like a substitute teacher that nobody listened to. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> right, don't, right, nobody listened to me, bro. I'm like, hey, bro, what, what, dude, like, what this projector? Well, let's put this movie on. And I just, <laughs> that substitute teacher, let's put the projector with the movie on. Then do a stapler at you right after you were Did done you take attendance? Teacher. Not really. No, I didn't. <laughs> but uh, You lost four kids. <laughs> <laughs> One's out the window right there. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm happy to be back and... Um, Get back at that too. So that's another thing I'm working on. So thank God for that opportunity. I've been wanting to do that forever. So glad to be back. What's something y'all wanted to do forever? That's you sitting right to. here on the Swerve podcast. Damn man. right. Oh, oh, okay. nice. Damn right. Smooth. That was nice. Yeah, smooth. Damn right. Smooth. Wow. Was smooth. Still going. This still yes. <laughs> Damn smooth, right. I was man. about to say the same thing. Yeah. Just the same thing. These are what dreams are made of. Swerve City podcast. 
Shout out Round Seattle. Thank you for everything. Sponsor of the Swerve City Podcast. And if you're tuning in right now, you can subscribe. YouTube.com backslash Swerve City Podcast. And pledge on Patreon. Patreon.com backslash Swerve City Podcast. Now, without further ado, we're going over right here to the guests of the evening. The NXT Tag Team Champions, Imperium. What it do, baby? What's going on? I said, what it do, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I felt something was coming. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was Crap. just waiting Step for you right to in. answer so I could yeah. like, lean like, back and check out what's happening. Figured you out already. Yeah, yeah. I almost choked on Swedish Fish doing that too, by the way. Swedish Fish again. Right. We ain't sponsored by y'all, so. You think by the end of the episode you can try one? Maybe, That's your goal to get <laughs> you have forty-five <laughs> minutes to an hour to get him to try one. Let's not give it to them right away, right? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep teasing. There you go, there you go, there you go. They maybe push the bag over closer to him, man. Whatever we gotta do to get it started. <laughs> yep. But um, yeah. So let's get into the backgrounds, man. We got Marcel, Germany, Fabian, Italy. The culture differences for coming over to America, man. There has to be tons of them. What were no. your biggest, like, I'd say the differences you've seen and some of the biggest, like, barriers you had to, like, kind of really, like, ooh, this was a little tougher to get accustomed to? Dude, so many things. It's hard to actually pick one. Um, pick them all. One of the, <laughs> <laughs> one of the, one of the best things, um, and I keep telling my friends and my family in Germany about it, is just people being super polite. Really? Every American keeps telling me, yo, that's a Southern thing. <laughs> yeah. You go to New York, you go here, you go there. That's totally different. He's from New York, so but yeah, honestly, every, everybody want to fight up there. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, uh, every, everybody talks like this all the time when you're like, aggressive. Right? Yeah, well, that yeah. sounds like German right there. So, you know, Ooh, it's oh, not okay. our, like, it's, uh, How are y'all libraries? You know? <laughs> 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 well, well, you know, we'll be here yeah, all pe- day. <laughs> people are super polite, man. People hold the door open for you, thank you, and you're welcome. And like, you slightly touch. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that it's is true. very nice. You almost feel bad walking out of your house in a bad mood because everybody's smiling. Everybody's nice. Like I remember the first time, um, you know, at the immigration. And, you know, <laughs> I had a little crap in my pants. I'm like, oh, man, this is the moment. Because mm. you hear all sorts of stories, right? Oh, yeah. they're going to ask you Detained. where you're from. What's your name? What did you do? Blah, blah, blah. Show me your record. All this kind of stuff. And um, the first thing the guy asked me was, hey, how are you? And I was totally, I was out already. Because oh, I didn't expect that. Like, in Germany, <laughs> you don't say how are you to people you don't know. It's hello. What do you want? <laughs> you know, it's, like, yeah. it's more like, it's more, hello. All right. <laughs> Give me something. There's very little small talk in Germany. So I had my whole thing ready and I was about to go, you know, I'm, I'm here for wrestling and WWE, blah, blah, blah. And I was about to go and he's like, yeah, how are you? I'm, like, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I didn't expect that. So yeah. people being nice and polite over here is one thing that, that uh, I'm really happy about. And like every day, that's just a benefit in my life. I really, really it's funny because I, I can't stand small talk. I try to ignore people yeah. as much as possible. <laughs> really? In airports especially. I feel like it depends on, on the on the person a little bit, yeah. I guess, right? Sometimes if you like... Situation too. I guess, I guess you want to yeah. talk less than five in the morning at an airport. Headphones you know. in means I am not. I don't exist. Yeah, true, yeah. Exactly, true, true. Yeah. But people still try to... Yeah. Hey, well, how's it going? Oh, oh so you, you wear Nikes too. Yes, we all wear Nikes. Get away. Leave me alone. <laughs> I, love, I, I love that one. <laughs> hey, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The universal, like, hey, I'm going to talk to you. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But yeah. we was at the but we was at the airport and I was talking. We was uh we you know we have a good rapport with each other, so we know he has these headphones on. I know we we always talk to each other, he wanna be bothered. So we was at the airport going to Seattle. And uh, I was like, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So you know and he's just like Ooh. And I'm just like talking to myself for like five minutes. I'm like, Bro, he's like, Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Let me eat my breakfast sandwich. <laughs> God. It was loud talking. Just looking at my phone. Yeah, bro. So you know it's crazy. That man, that song. And uh, he just zoned out. So. Especially when it's a flight from Orlando to Seattle. Mm. Yeah. Ain't much to talk about, bro. No. no I'm we, sitting right next to you, We got five hours to talk. Like, yeah. I'll meet you somewhere in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> Save some for later. Yeah. yeah. Ask me exactly. how I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the guy turning up the radio, like slide yeah. you while you're talking. Like, louder and louder and louder. I love that's me. Or I'm the, I'm the guy that does it on the TV remote. Just mm-hmm. make it loud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, the game's on. See, polite though. Very polite. Yeah. You know, you don't I say it right jerk. away. You don't say it right away. That's like, yeah. I I I ease into it. But if you don't get you know, if you don't get the Iggy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we kind of got to turn up the volume a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Nice. What about yourself coming over? Man, honestly, for me, I loved it. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, I, I, I saw Arnold when I was five years old. And, like, my dad Ooh. told me who he was and whatever. And that he moved to the States. And, like, such a similar upcoming. Because he grew up in a tiny village with a couple of thousand people. Same as me. Then went to Germany. Then to England. And then here. So, funny enough, we have that same path. But... Uh, ever since I saw him, I was always a big fan of the States. I always wanted to move here since I was five years old. And, uh, like, I'm a huge fan of The Simpsons. So, when I moved here... That's always the connection. It's funny. I'm telling Everybody's you, always a Simpsons fan. I'm telling you. Like, I love The Simpsons. And when, when I moved here, there were so many things that reminded me. It's like, The Simpsons, you know? Like, there's one thing that I always comes to mind is, like, when you call somebody, you know, because, like, there's 2,000 people living there. Like, yeah. There's more people go to school here. You know, yeah, very true. But uh, so if you want to call someone, you talk to a person instantly. Whereas right. here, like you call you call a number. If you want to do this, press one. If you want to do this, <laughs> press two. And I'm like that's totally Simpsons, you know. <laughs> it's totally Simpsons. So like I always loved it, and uh, ever since I came here the first time for like I don't know 2014, I always like wish I could live here, and it finally happened. So I'm right. super thankful so, yeah. to be here. What would you say is like the biggest adjustment? Like, cause you know you come from somewhere else. In another country, like you know what? When I first got here to America, this is the one thing. It it's like still to this day, probably it takes you a, a bit to get used to. What is something? It could be like the language barrier. Could it be something that somebody does? Honestly, sometimes it's the English language because there another Simpsons also, thing right there. Like Germans have a word so for far, everything. So well, yeah. Right, right. Well, I'm trying. You know, yeah. English. Uh, his English is better, but you know, whenever Simpsons. it's funny. Like there are so many American things I never heard of. So. We are texting with somebody the other day, and he replies, all right, C4. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I don't C4? even know what that means. Dude, like, did he fall asleep and, like, his head crashed on him? Like, what is C4? And he said, like, oh, yeah, it's like copy. It's like, you know, whatever, thumbs up. Yeah, no, okay. I don't, I, don't I, don't know. Know. I don't know. I never heard of that. Y'all heard C4? No, 10-4. 10-4. 10-4. 4 10 4 C4, 10-4. Four. Four. I'm like, C4, Some, you don't... You got to excuse. Oh, I'm it's, sorry. It's 10-4. It's, four. Four. it's, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's oh, like okay. military language for affirmative, way too right? Wa way like, too much war zone. Yeah, C4. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, that's C4. Yeah, well, 10-4. Sorry, guys. <laughs> even in the military, we don't even use 10-4 anymore. We just copy. Copy. It's crazy. Like, stuff like that happens to me all the time. Like, Red red eye was another one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've been on that red eye. I don't have no idea what that means. Yeah. Like, what do you mean red eye? It sounds like it's like it's like pink eye to me. <laughs> I have no idea. What, like, what do you mean? <laughs> you have an infection in your eye? What is red eye, bro? Like, you need, we need to stay away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> right? Dude, crazy, but he knows all that stuff. Keep it simple. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, but then but then our uh, English language can get like very complex as well because one word can mean like seven different things as well. Like can That's can true. can yeah. True. Or like you know like doing music right That's music true. i'm finding That's all true. these words i'm like i can use this word like three different ways five yeah. different ways four right. different ways and i can keep the the rhyme scheme going a little bit longer right. so, but that's how complex english can be that's why mm -hmm. hip-hop is so whoa the the wordsmiths on there are like we call them machines like yeah eminem is like a machine to me in my yeah. mind because yeah. he just uses words it's so crazy but like imagine a german eminem i would love to see that bro i would love to see how to ask as that. somebody oh, yeah so, well, yeah. Who do you have? I'm, Who do you have? Not I'm, I'm me. educating him. I'm educating him when it comes to that. Bro, I'm very late '90s hip hop. I'm really like I can't tell you. If you if you tell me about like what who's cool with me, bro? You like, you're cool. You're cool. Bro. Who is it nowadays? Like Lil Uzi and the Baby and the NBA. Y'all need to leave my Uzi alone. Like, I have no idea. I have no idea who that like. I accept Uzi. I just for what he is. Bro, I don't know. I don't Dr. Dre. I know Snoop Dogg. I know Tupac. I like, like those kind of people. Yeah. Right? I know Nate Dogg. I love Nate Dogg. Like. You know those guys, two one three and those guys. Like I love that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's Boy, my G, stuff. Okay, okay. Hey, yeah. like, I'm a California guy. That's my stuff. You know. Yeah, you cool, man. And like, yeah. You alright, man. You know that, brother. You know. <laughs> just I'm not sure if that's a popular opinion, but to me, um, the first two Eminem um, albums, which was uh, Slim Shady LP yeah, and Marshall uh, Mathers, Mar to me, best hip hop albums ever, in my opinion. And I tell you why. And I tell you why. As a wrestler, Eminem was a guy who had an actual gimmick. Slim Shady, the darkest of the dark, like every yeah. human being has weird thoughts, but he would never express, he would never say. But Slim Shady is that little 0.1% of the human being that is so dark and so bad, you know, that he would actually say it. I love that, I, I think that was awesome. I always think there's um, double-edged swords with that because he also like crossed over with that rock audience as well. That was allowed to do that. 
hip hop, there wasn't too many people that were allowed to do that. So right. you kind of played both sides of that, right? In a way, I feel like in the when when did they come out those albums? Late, oh, late one night? was Marshall Mathers. Yeah, yeah but what, what year? You know, two thousand one. Two thousand one. So I don't. At least in Germany, everything he said, everything he did with his chainsaw and stuff was just never seen before. Very I've new. never seen anything like this before. Like yeah, uh, Germany super. I guess. Uh, old school in that when it comes to that I guess I don't know I can see that but but everybody was shocked like there's that guy with that hockey mask and like that chainsaw yeah. and like you know doing stuff and like rapping about doing horrible things to his wife and this right never seen before like never and actually after that a couple of German guys picked that up and pretty much the same career just in German standards obviously in, yeah. in Germany so they kind of saw it from the States and adapted to it a so bit. how'd you guys how'd you guys adapt like being from you know, being from different countries, like, what's the first time you heard, like, different music, or, like, did you guys, were you guys, like, younger, and then you see, like, Eminem on TV, and Dr. Dre and 50 Cent, and then he's like, yo, who are these guys, and they're speaking a different language. Especially with the language barrier, because right. you know multiple languages. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, how many like, languages you know? you know? Three. Three? Okay. Uh, German, Italian, and English, but, like, with us, for example, or where I lived, like, it's just tiny mountain village somewhere up there, so we still had, like, the top charts or whatever so we would still get music from the states and and so so we knew like the the really big tracks but i like he totally introduced me to 90s rap and i love it like biggie yeah. and tupac and that's it's a, awesome that's yeah. a heavyweight class yeah that's, that's yeah like, it's like it's funny though he's well, the type of guy well, <laughs> he, he does he does cardio and yeah. then he learns like each and every word of the lyrics yeah yeah i don't want to yeah. put him on the spot right now but he has like a couple oh, of b.i.g no. songs down <laughs> just saying like he could uh, somebody give him beat you did him right bro <laughs> oh man yeah, you fed him chicken soup for the soul so. <laughs> <laughs> like spoon fed that yeah one. but hey like but germany's a highly um um uh, how do you say influenced by american music yeah basically totally. i would say yeah, like yeah, ten, till, until 10 years ago 99 percent was american music yeah the biggest wow. stars were if like you got you know, the big hits here you you totally know about it in europe for no. sure like wow. you hear them all, all over them. definitely, definitely. Yeah. and yeah. they say too they say that it's like every artist i've talked to from the smaller guys to the, the biggest like europe has the most loyal fan bases that's why they love going overseas. Yeah. Because they yeah. know they're going to have a loyal fan base. Yeah. yeah. They're going to have people loyal to them. The, the, every arena is going to get packed. The zombies. Five by zombies. Absolutely. Yeah. They, their tours are overseas are insane. Sell right. out everything. Like right. Thousands of people. Like, crazy. Well, it must be crazy for American people sometimes, too, because you can do things in Germany you can't do over here. Ooh. Eminem was always very funny. Like, if people want to check that out like in german uh, there's a german show <laughs> called <laughs> tv total and he would all oh, he would just cuss like yeah. he would he would get a question but he would just he wouldn't <laughs> yeah. even like you know it's a question he would just cuss like random german words words he learned i love germany i can say whatever the, uh, i want you know yeah. well, okay so wow. he kind of you know stuff like yeah. that like having i don't know like uh open bottles on the street and stuff like that it's just normal remember when we went to uh, europe the first time with nxt and um, one of the Forgotten Sons, I think, they were, they were just, they were blown done with away, everything. Yeah, they were blown like, away because yeah. people, like, peed on that little open container gimmick on the street. There's, like, an open oh, yeah, container yeah. thing, and there's, like, a wall, so you can't see through, but you go in there, you do your business, then you go out, they're like, what do you mean, like, open street? You can <laughs> <take your car." laughs> what are you talking about, you know? Like, <laughs> like, it's what? just crazy. It's just, it's, it's, it's like really, like, a different planet. Sometimes. I think it's always a bigger shock when Americans go over there rather than Europeans come over to America. Yeah. Well, you've been there. Yeah. First time I, I met there. you well, was over there. I was I was like raised over there because like I was. Oh, you told me that, yeah. Yeah, so I was there till like I was seven years right. old. Um, so like, but as an adult, is the seeing those certain things are a little different. Yeah, you yeah. know, I I, I, I got to go out and experience those things myself rather than my my father taking me to the streets and Definitely, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So those are two different things, but like experiencing it, experiencing it as an adult is where I fully got the experience of like being overseas. Right. You know, so. But that's awesome for me. I loved it. What countries did you did you wrestle? England, Germany. I did Switzerland one day. Switzerland. Yeah, that was like a we drove in and out. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, no, <laughs> not, a Swiss, not a Swiss fan. No. Uh, well, I like the country. Just the the wrestling business over there is horrible. Yeah, yeah, Always yeah. been. I mean, I was with WXW, so we went as a. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, I was in uh, Frankfurt. Is where I is where I was like stationed. Hmm. Like we were all stationed, based in Frankfurt. We'd again in Hanau, right. where we moved around. Can't yeah. remember specifically which one was which as being that young. Right. But I remember those countries. And I remember, like, a lot of big hills and stuff like that. It's just, like, it's very really spotty. It I just is, remember yeah. certain things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, uh, 
that was a great childhood for me, though. Not about my childhood. Let's talk about y'all childhood. Like, um, you know, second generation. Yep. Wrestler. Exactly, yeah. Uh, talk about your father and um, looking at, were you looking up to him? Who were you guys, were definitely, you looking up to yeah. your father or yeah, definitely. other people? You no, were, definitely. It was, yeah. um, so since the first wrestling tapes I've seen were the tapes of my dad. And they were totally different than everything you would see in WWF, right? Mm-hmm. Very mad based very bad quality, super dark and everything. And mm-hmm. they would wrestle in, uh, in gigantic tents with like four or 5,000 people there. And they would do tournaments over like 30 to 60 days. So every day people would like fill their tent up with like four or 5,000 people. And was more, it was more of that beer drinking, chanting, mm. football, soccer kind of crowd, right? But it's, it, was very, it was very honest and very emotional, you know what I mean? Right. I think nowadays a lot of stuff is very... Boom, look at that, man. There he is. Oh, there hey. he is. Oh, that was like super young too. Wow. Yep. Look at that. Crazy. Crash young man. Oh, very, very, very young. He wouldn't like that. <laughs> he always <laughs> no. liked himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like he had to fight Rocky in a movie. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Even Drago style. I get that a lot too. Yeah, so, I can see that. Yeah. Um, so around yeah. what time do you think that picture is? What that time? must be like 1955. Wow. 19, my, mm. my dad was born in 1933. Ooh. During crazy times in Germany. Yeah. So um, my dad... Being 12 years old, he already served for two armies, the Germans and the French. Wow. God. Yeah, as a little kid, he actually um, uh, flew from home over the border and uh, went to the French Legion. Okay. Uh, one of the hardest armies in the world. Like, the French Legion is tough and yeah. um, crazy life. Like, long story short, he signed up. You got to sign up for five years. They took him to North Africa. Um, he flew from that. That's why when uh, my mom took all of my sisters and me, um, sisters and brothers and me, my siblings, to Disneyland, we, ne- we could never take him with us. Because how is it called when you, when you f- uh, flee from your army, if you leave them? Fun um, Desert. Know, like a it's de- called a desert AWOL? AWOL, AWOL like, yeah. So you, so you leave them and that never... Um, Shit. They could could have still yeah they could have still arrested him for that so oh, he was yeah. never allowed to even like forty years later he wasn't allowed to go to um, Disneyland Paris with us whatever um, I I grew up with my dad being like the proudest man I've ever known like mm-hmm. for him it was always wrestling 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 he was married five times because there was always wrestling 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 and wrestled on every continent of the world and um, man I've I've never met anybody who was so proud and so a hundred and one percent wrestling all the time like that's how yeah. i grew up and um a lot of the imperium um things we're saying the matter sacred and all that stuff is from my dad that's oh, everything okay. my dad would teach me literally as a kid um this my son that's the mad and that is sacred that's where i get goosebumps talking about yeah. it because he was so proud of it and all that you know so i grew up that way and obviously i was i was a fan of uh, all the wwf stars right i yeah. loved them like Shawn michaels and all those guys were my heroes obviously um but then i always had the different side of wrestling too which was the european style right not quite world of sports but you know still different and yeah for me it was always uh, obvious that i want to want to like fill my father's footsteps and want to yeah. become a wrestler and uh yeah, you always encourage me to do it too. Um, wrestling is not a big thing in, in Germany, amateur wrestling, not like in America, unfortunately. Yeah. So I started with boxing and when I was nine, did that for four years, then started amateur wrestling because we moved and um, did that for a year. And then finally, uh, grabbed my dad's old boots out of his um, closet, fit perfectly. My first 10 years, I wrestled in my father's boots each and every match. Ooh. And yeah, that's how it all began. He saw me wrestle, he saw me, um, I don't know if you have, have you been in Hamburg with WXW? Yes, I have. Great, great city, right? Great yes. audience, everything. He saw yes. me actually winning the titles, uh, tag team titles with Mac back in the day. Mac, the Mac. The Mac, yeah. you know, Hamburg's finest, the Mac. Yes. Um, we won the tag team titles, he saw me and all that kind of, that was highly emotional. That was like, yeah. he grabbed the microphone after that match and said, my son, uh, or my, wow. b- right there, he said, my boy, you're going to be a great one and I love you and I'm very proud of you and I still get goosebumps from that. It was uh, probably the I best remember- moment of my life. I remember that young guy right there. This was, was what him. year was this? Um, that was 2014, I want to say. 14? I think so. 13, That's when 14. I started coming over there. Yep. You've been over more than once, right? Yeah, multiple times. But the, I remember 14 was my, my first my first time there with the World Triangle League. That was my first trip over there. Dude, those are great. Oh, yeah. Good um, times. Good team. We also have over here a professional skier. 
former professional skier, or are you still right. you still professional? You still hitting them slopes, bro? No, <laughs> never, <laughs> never, never right. no. no, probably not a smart idea yeah. considering uh, the job, you know. But uh, yeah, like yeah, I was a pro skier. <laughs> uh, how did that? How did that come about? Being coming from a small village too. Yeah. Well, so like, um, like the village or the region where I grew up is still part of Italy, but it used to be a part of Austria. It just become, became a part of Italy. With the world war that's why i speak german and like we get along and everything and uh you know it's like in the middle of the mountains it's like in the middle of the alps so like after i saw arnold i was looking for that special thing that i wanted to do with my yeah. life so mm -hmm. i like tried soccer tried handball and like almost made the national team there he always Whoa, makes fun okay. of me yeah not yet go for it oh, not okay. Yet. Tease. okay one Probably get him around two. We'll probably get him around yeah, there. We'll get him around there. there. Talk about some Tupac. He'll, 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 he'll be like, yeah, man. And then after that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like played handball and soccer, everything. And then uh, because everybody else, like a couple of buddies of mine that were in the same village, they started skiing. So like I always preferred like sports where there's not a huge team because you have to rely on so many people. You know yeah. what I mean? So I like followed skiing for a little bit and then was just sitting at home one night flipping through channels and like came across the last five minutes of Smackdown Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar and Big Show and like that's, that's it, it. Yeah. Yep. that's it that's it the rest is history I like kind of continued skiing a little bit after that but just how did you find skiing though like how did you get like um it's but just because like there's so many mountains and skiing is a big thing in like oh, yeah, Austria, right. Germany, like France, Italy and stuff and like a couple of buddies of mine were doing it and I knew them so like they just brought me along one time and like did okay and then just followed that for a little bit but as soon as I saw wrestling like skiing was yeah whatever yeah, yeah. so the first time you hop on some skis right <laughs> <laughs> like yeah like, you know yeah. let's have a break this down because we, no, yeah, we don't we, go, like, we don't like we don't you know we play basketball and uh, you know and football I don't know how stereotypical it is but you don't right. see no skis up in here right <laughs> so you know you, you're, on the, you're on that slope and you're like you know this is a whole bunch of snow and Bunch of trees all over the place, and you just like, good God, <laughs> <laughs> let's go! You know what I'm saying? Just trying is it to, that simple? It's like, is it so, yeah. it's like the first time you're on some skis, like you don't know, have no idea what you're doing. I had no idea. So I, you had like an instructor. How how that how that first process begin? So like a friend of my dad is like the was like the president of the skiing club of our little village, okay. and my dad just asked him if he would mind taking me along one time just to try it out, you know, because I had shown interest, and he was like, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, whatever. But he's like a very he's like straightforward businessman. I always looked at him as the Vince McMahon of my village, you know. He's like <laughs> driven, always like, you know, keeps going, and uh, he t he grabbed me along, and we went to that big skiing resort. It's like one of the biggest ones in Italy. It just went like way to the top, and I always thought like usually you know when you start out you yeah, like, like keep it like yeah, you know keep it shallow a little bit and then like <laughs> pizza. But we fry. just kept going up and going up. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is that a real thing? Because uh, I go I go off South Park like your pizza when you should have French fried. <laughs> it just goes really fast with the skis. Well, you, yeah, you just do the pizza slice. Like, yeah, you just open the ends and then like you break. Yeah, oh, okay. that's the so thing. That's a real thing. But like I didn't know that. So, but anyway, like we kept going past these shallow like tracks, and I was like, man, where's this guy taking me? And we just kept going up and up. And like first time I was on one of those lifts too. And when when we got out, he just like put the ski on me, and he was like, follow me. I was like, okay. <laughs> he just it's he just like over there, boy. Yeah, he was just like I just like kept going, and then I kind I think. I've seen somewhere doing the pizza slides, and I just like did it, and then we kept going, and like just from there, I kept like training with them and going. And after actually, like uh, after I stopped skiing to make more money for wrestling, I like worked as a skiing instructor, like taught little kids how to ski, and like they all learned the little like yeah. skiing. So it was like no, was just like you know, he didn't take it to like a little hill. No, like, no, little, man, he's he's like straightforward. It's like no, all right, this is, we're going to this like, little land right here, and this is a little tree. You can avoid this one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I just move around. You know, now he took you out in the. Yeah. He took you to the like, cool borders. Tall now. ones, yeah. Like, like. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "All right, good luck. Let's Follow go, me." Yeah. If, if, if that's just the type of guy he is, he's just like, okay, let's go. Man. No nonsense, Sink you know. But hey. Exactly. Like Deep sometimes things. it doesn't hurt getting thrown into cold water, honestly, you know. But I'll tell you one thing, that really, if anything, makes your instincts like Yeah. Yeah. To be like to, to, to be going down the side and have to react like that. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. It's just so many factors that come, like the weather, you know, the consistency of the snow, if it's icy and like how your skis are prepared and all that. I it's wouldn't just, have thought that far. Yeah. It's like <laughs> I it's have thought once that you far. get to the racing thing, it's like millimeters and everything. So oh, it's yeah. Wow. But yeah, 
You did that too? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, man. Like, he's like, hold on, what? What? Yeah. Like, wow, How many medals? Team, like, yeah, because no, they were all in the team back then, and I just yeah. started out, and like after that first time, I just kept training with them, and like just got the skis, got all the equipment, and just kept going, kept training, and then, yeah. So like the the pinnacle of that would be like Olympics or moving on exactly yeah okay okay okay, 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 okay. it's like Like where's the the next levels to this (laughs) yeah okay like we gotta go somewhere when the X Games maybe something like that but that was always my goal until like I said I came across wrestling and then I was just instantly knew it I I funny thing I loved watching X Games and playing the games never would have touched it though. For oh, me, yeah. nope. Yeah, I'm like snowboarding looks cool. Yeah, not gonna do it. No, but I love watching it. Like, yeah, that's one of my things. Yeah, it was like skateboarding. When I see him going up and down that half pipe and all that. I'm like, how they not? How they getting to going up there? Yeah, because like, yeah, like, it's like straight up, right? Yeah, like, 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 like you know what I mean? Oh man, that yeah. just rang a bell. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard this name in like at least fifteen I to, years. That's I used to crazy. watch him compete, like, do big Dude. air and everything. Isn't that the guy with the glasses? Yeah, yeah. 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 I just know from Tony Hawk, like the the games. You know? I just, he, like, I, let's talk about it. Oh, hey, hey, we, yeah, we just talk about it. Yeah, we go deep. No, wow. Well, Eddie Lightner sucks. Yeah, oh, like, oh, there you go. No, you told me that before the <laughs> yeah. show. No, like um, I remember. I know. I remember Bob Burnquist specifically because he's the one that created that move, the Benihana. I remember that. That's what, what he's that? like. What is the Benihana? The, like a trick. It's, it's a, one of the tricks that he do uh, on the board. Like when you bring the board between your legs like that and you bring it back. Oh, okay. I, and because I, I used to kill that move on Tony Hawk, bro. That used to be my go-to move. That and the Madonna. Remember the Madonna? Oh, the, the, yeah, the, 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 the foot. You put the foot and like, you like, so we're not. Yeah. No. Yeah, so we're not like, yeah the thing with you the You talk thing. about basketball? Yeah, we good. But, yeah. yeah, that's like. But I just remember like the video, like, <laughs> but the, the video games was just like, I would just tap into with extreme sports and stuff like that. Tony Hawk, my guy. But do y'all play video games much? You said, so you said, much, but I, yeah, I you said Call of Duty before. nowadays. Yeah. yeah, yeah, same, same. Yeah, Call of Duty. Yeah, I actually got off of playing video games for a little while because I was just like I couldn't stop until I finished that one mission and like you know so I was like so you, this you, is so good for me and then like you know with knowing him and like just hanging out sometimes at home uh, I was just like yeah screw it let's get so one. so this, so I have to preface this there's Ooh. two different type of Call of Duty players yes there's okay I'm just gonna play with my bro. Because, you know, I know him. Mm-hmm. You know, if we cuss each other out, that's no problem. Yeah. You know I mean, that's my brother. I love him. Right, right, right. And then you get, like, multiplayer playing with random people, hearing the most I'm not craziest that stuff you hear playing against random people on Call of Duty. Are you guys those guys or you play with people you know? We just oh, play with people. Real like life some... tag team. Yeah, right. right. Him, Walter Building our and chemistry hey. wherever we can, you know? Okay. Well, actually, I'm the type of guy, like, when, whenever uh, nobody's online and I want to play, and the other guy is trying to talk to me. I just mute my microphone. Oh, I just act like do I don't have a microphone. <laughs> right there. That's the know? most intimidating video game picture ever. I'm I not wish that'd be game. me. Look at me. I'm always the guy like being like down, you know, waiting for somebody to get like revived. You know, that's me. <laughs> what do you guys do? Like team deathmatch? What you guys play together? Uh, Warzone. 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 Yeah. Everybody's on Warzone. Warzone. Yeah. Warzone. Okay. But man, twelve-year-olds scare me in this game. Yes. Yes. Yo, they are crazy, great. right? They have not crazy. nothing but time, bro. Not yep. Real. The reflexes are crazy. Yeah. It's like the old argument. Yeah, like, especially I ain't if you learn it yeah, at yeah. that age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I told him that like, it doesn't make me angry that I lose. It makes me angry that the five-year-old kid like, kicks my butt. Like, right. He like, should every round. Like, you know? It's just yeah. crazy. I think I played one, maybe two rounds with uh, Daniel Vito, Kona Reeves, and EJ. Never again. EJ is good, <laughs> I heard. He's he, uh, he really ridiculous. He, yeah, yeah, he's Once really you get good. on streaming it level, I'm like, no, we, we're not friends. I can't play you in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. There's I no know. way. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, it, it's, it's way too late for me to hop into it. Because yeah. now everybody's good. I know. Because it's way too late. Like, Fortnite, yeah, you should hop on Fortnite. They're in, like, season nine. Yeah, no, 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 no. Everybody's good yeah, at the I'm game. Good. Now. I'm good, Chief. Exactly. I'm yeah. good. No, yeah. I feel you, brother. It's exactly. We just said that, right? It's, it's not even yeah. fun anymore. It's, it's just, dude, like. We're not good enough to, you know, right. mess with those guys. I just, just play with the homies. Like, we play games. I play with him. I play with a few other people. Yeah. A couple of my bros, and then that's it. Bro, I'll tell you what, though. It's a nice way to get in touch or stay in touch with people right now, it right? Is. Because you can't really leave the house a lot of times and quarantines and blah, blah. You know, it's just a nice way to, like, you know, keep in touch with, with the boys. Yeah, sure. We were talking about this the other day. Like, ain't it, it, doesn't it feel like nowadays 
Games are becoming way more stressful than they need to be. Definitely. I don't enjoy. Yeah. They're not games. as simple. It's like the less simpler they became, the more stressful it became. Mm-hmm. Like, like, look at the graphics. Look at this. Look at this. The, the it runs on this FPC. Like, I'm like, it's not fun, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm bro. not having fun, bro. Yeah. <laughs> bro, I left the map. I saved it, and that tree grew back. <laughs> like, bro, like, I'm just like, like, bro, like, that's the. I'm not like, having <laughs> fun. Like, so, like, 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 that's, like that's, is the gameplay good? That's exactly me. I'm right? Like, I'm like, like, I'm not. Fun, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> it, this can't just be me having this misery. I don't know what you guys are like. I actually would have loved. I told him like I would love to do that 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 Twitch thing. You know, play FIFA, play this and that. I just can't because I get really mad. You never. Like, I really get angry. I get really angry. Like Switch, like Wii and stuff like that. Like what? What? Like Wii? Like you talk about like uh like no no, no the, the um like twitching and streaming it. Oh, I can, yeah, oh okay, yeah, I got yeah, you. Like I got Twitch, you. Is it Twitch? Right. I got Twitch. you. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Just okay. streaming a little bit. I would love that, but dude, no. I can't like because mm-hmm. I get really angry. Yeah. Like that's just it's just it's obviously it's me being bad, you know, and not good. And all those kids are like kicking my butt online. So, so it just makes game, me very angry. This the game you can play that you don't like get extremely angry. What's a game you play with you guys like you know you can't do it because you're just gonna get mad? FIFA, FIFA? Like the soccer FIFA. game, Formula yeah. One for me. Just it's mad for me, bro. That's the only yeah. game I get tight about. I don't get tight about nothing else but football. <laughs> And that's not even my number one thing, bro. I tell you what, honestly, you got to teach me how to play Madden. Because I played Madden before. I just don't got get the sticks right out I there. I just don't get the rules. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't get the rules. Like, you know, in Europe, or like us Germans uh, especially, we don't this, have this no reps. football teams and nothing. This I reps. have no idea. Reps with it, you'll be like, oh, yeah, don't do this. Okay. Right. Sometimes the game's Probably. just going to do it anyway, though. But I know, would, I would play with my friends back in the day, and whenever like somebody would actually catch that thing, we would freak out. Because, yeah. like, you know, it's like, <laughs> 100 tries, like, you know, 99 go... Pfft, <laughs> you know, so uh, it took him two days to talk to me after one game of Madden. Oh, really? We always go down. So we go down the wire and everything. Everything. Oh, like, I'm so used to yeah. it. I'm so used yeah, to losing each now each to the bottom. Oh, but each like, each like, yeah. like before, like we go down to the wire because I, you know, it took me a while. He used to dust me. So then I, you know, you, you get used to playing somebody. You get used Obviously, to playing yeah, style. Yeah, yeah, so figure it out, yeah. then the games got really competitive, and it was the only. game. I was like, look. Everybody has a game they play. It was like a test of your friendship. Like it, it's going to test your friendship. Like I don't care how tight you are. It's that one game you play with your bro where it's like, all right, this is like, it's going to get so competitive. We're going to say something crazy to each other. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah. it's like, but we played and every game went down to the wire. And I'm like, it was one game. He beat me on the last play. It's literally 30 <laughs> seconds left. 30 seconds left. He's like, this is bomb. And then he's like, I had him. I had him by touchdown. <laughs> like, I had him. I was like, this game's done. In my head, I was like, but this guy is the comeback king. Like, I'm the crunch time guy. I'm the guy to like be down and then like I'll just come back. Right, but right. then he does that to me, and I'm not used to it. Right. So, right, right, right. <laughs> so, it's bad. It's bad. So I don't dominate anything. I'm the underdog in everything. I'm like, but that last punch, I got him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, and then I'm that one. Then it was this one game he beat me, and I was like, you know what, bro? I just, I just logged out. I said, yeah. Uh, I was like, hey, good game, right? Hello, hello. <laughs> I was thinking going on. Right. Signs off. Red. <laughs> yeah. Nope. What tests y'all friendship? What what really is like the one thing that comes between y'all? Like, all right, if we can get past this, we can get through anything. We are both like, how do you say that? Like uh, stubborn, sometimes. stubborn, I guess. Yeah. yeah. If we believe in something, we're gonna fight for it and stand up for it. I think we are almost known as like an old, uh, how do you say, like an old couple. Yeah. Because we we fight. Like, yeah. we fight. The thing is, like, we can't fight as bad, that, like, in a way where we never get back to each other, you know? Yeah. But we, we're both passionate about the stuff, about a lot of things, you know, especially about wrestling. Oh, look at this. Man, I hate that. Oh. <laughs> Christian Mingle. That wasn't it. <laughs> that wasn't England. Yeah. Great picture. Great picture. <laughs> that's that That's that dating site. Like, you have to date both of us at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you get Wait, one. What? I was just waiting for, I was waiting for somebody to say that. <laughs> <Two is there. laughs> I love this. So that's so yeah. so you so you guys say like kind of being stuff and like it's 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 give and take in any well, relationship though like it's yeah give and take. exactly and I feel like once like you hang out so much you you get to a point where like you're just honest you know and you say what you think and like honestly most of the times we like have to fight is like I don't know if you're really passionate about like stuff when it comes to, like in the ring or whatever you know like stuff that we really believe in and but we always like he said we always like find a way to get back and like be cool with each other again. And then just, I don't know. Like, I always said from day one, I feel like there's, like, a reason that, like, we both, like, cross paths. And, like, it's become more and more clear, so. Well, that, but that also is a good thing, in a way. Because yeah. with your brothers, whoever you go to war with, you don't need no pushovers. You know That's what I mean? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we even, exactly. okay, we might 
This is cool, but go back to that last picture. <laughs> <laughs> we might, you know, tic tac with each other, but you know, you have someone that you can go to war with and you could trust. And exactly I and I would that. rather, I would yeah, rather, you would rather have those stubborn arguments with someone you know you can go to war with, and you know that's going to have your back. You know what I mean? I got that. As opposed to someone 100%. that that sure, you know though. is always going to cower, and then you're like, nah. But a picture like this, y'all don't need to go nowhere. Y'all need to go back to each other. <laughs> <laughs> this is fate. You know, like y'all greeting me to go to heaven. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> like the Cameras don't lie. Like, oh, look at that. Yeah. Look at this Sean back here. Like, they're like, God is right behind us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Go up. <laughs> Man. That was in England, right? Or the yeah. Newspaper? Yeah, it was a newspaper. Like, Dude, we tried to, like, pull up all those, like, heelish, like, you know, faces. Like, no, give me a normal one. Just one. You know, we don't can use it. It's okay. I'm going to walk. Okay. So how, how long you got Next day, bro. Seconds. Next day, next day, right here. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm staying with this topic for like, how long like y'all been like tight? Like how long y'all been like friends? Bro, it's funny. We we never met each other before we actually got here. We would yeah. work wow. for the same promotions in Germany, in England, um, but we never met each other. So we heard from each other, but we never met each other. And then we were supposed to drive in the same car, right? But he was you yeah, were over yeah, here a week yeah. early, I think. It was actually like. First time we met was the day when we both started here in WWE. But I had just flown over like five or six days earlier to get like my apartment and stuff sorted. Yeah. And like I didn't even know about it, but like WWE had booked the rental car for the both of us because mm. they must have assumed well both speak German, they probably ride together. And uh, but I didn't know that. So the day before we started out, uh, he sent me an email that he was in the hotel airport and like. I remember when I pulled up, I was like, I looked at him, I was like, for some reason, I had this feeling like, there's got to be a reason this guy is, is coming into my life right now. And then we just like, we <laughs> drove to the into PC. Your life. <laughs> yeah, look at it. I'm thinking, right. about, I'm thinking fade, about the fade. right fade. melody. Is it? Is not, like, what is it? Like, it's a theme song. <laughs> Man. That, Jurassic yeah. Park is playing Bro, in the background. Bro, Fabian, Fabian's, like, Fabian's like, if we ever get in the ring, Swerve, I got something for you. Oh, <laughs> 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 we have. <laughs> hey, we've been there like once or twice. Yeah, yeah. a couple times. Yeah, a couple yeah. times. You know? Uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You know, man. And seriously, like, drove to the PC, started talking, best buddies right after, and then just. That's, know, that's the great feeling. That's yeah, when you feel like you know you're gonna have you're gonna face challenges going forward yeah. after that. But yep. it's good to know like all right, at least he's gonna be like I have him to fall back on. He can fall back on me. Yeah, We're tight yeah. going through this because going through all this, man. I swear you need someone to you need someone to confide in and just be like, hey, like, can I trust you with this information? My emotions, my mental, what's going on? It's good to have that because he's going through the same thing you are going through. So y'all can tr y'all can literally vibe off of each other, and that builds right. your strength right, to right, get right. through anything. Right, you need that. I keep thinking of the movie nineteen seventeen. Like, have y'all seen that? No, oh. I've not personally, man. No, oh. phenomenal movie. Went to the movie yeah. theater to see it. Great movie. Um, but it's like these two guys, um, Germany actually. Um, they have to cross the. Uh, they're they're at, they're at war. Um, it must be first world war. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And um, is it like the Dunkirk story or something? Like not that? Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. I think that's movie that's oh, just shot like on. always in one goal, goal, right? Yeah, yeah. First World War. but it's some two guys, man, and they have to cross. They have to cross over and get relay this message and stuff, yeah. and just like, um, one dude is like very like yes, great movie. Um, one dude's just very like just um, talking about all his problems, all his issues, and everything, and now. He now, and he's like, I don't think we should do this. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. And he's like, No, come on, man. We gotta do this, man. My brother's over there. We gotta get over there. I gotta do this. So like, so they go through all this, like all this stuff, like bombs going off. There's only them two. They have no backup. They have no uh, nobody's gonna help them. Wow. They can't be seen because if they're seen, they're dead. They just going through all this, just crawling through all this stuff. Um, uh, don't want to spoil it, but something happens to an individual in the film. <laughs> and now his words that he told him are he has to carry on alone. And without him oh. having those words and like encouraging him, he wouldn't have been able to carry on and, and actually complete it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. just because he motivated him, it was like, come on, man, we got to do this. Because if like, and the one dude wanted to turn back, like literally they got right over the line. They're like, ah, oh, no, we, we, we need to abort, man. No, right. no we can't. Right. And then that it's a really it's a really good story. So I encourage you guys to watch it, especially being the war and talk about your uh, father and everything. Uh, that's a good recommendation for you guys.
I get confronted with that stuff all the time, so, you know, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I know most of the movies, though. I know. <laughs> well, I tell you what, this, being really a good. German and American, you're either that or you're like the Lederhosen guy, you know, doing weird dances. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's either or, bro. There's not much in between, to be honest. So, yeah. All right, so we got to get to this before we get into the fun stuff. We already been having a good old fun time. We got to talk about y'all winning the NXT Tag Team Championships, you know, against Matt Riddle, Timothy Thatcher. <laughs> Crazy circumstances, being that was like the, really the first time we started like quarantining and doing a lot of the no audience um, events and stuff. Yeah. But did that feeling take anything away from this moment for you? Even though we didn't have the arena, the full sale arena, we didn't have like a takeover, we didn't have any of that stuff. But did that that not matter to you guys? Just the fact that y'all are holding these tag team championships up. Well, man, like, obviously, it's always great to have the audience there, you know, reactions, like, is what I think makes it all that much better. But, like, I, honestly, like, for me, when we got into the ring and this, ha this happened, like, to me, it's always 110% real. So, no matter how it happened, like, it did happen, that's what matters the most. So, yeah. like, it's been a long time coming, so it was a very special moment, and, like, I'm proud of it, yeah. 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 I feel like, um, you know how it is, like, Everywhere in, in the wrestling business, like highs can be super high. Sometimes you're just over the moon and everything is cool. But sometimes lows are super low too, right? Mm -hmm. And we're one of the guys who actually, if you look at the um, the uh, at the champions um, since the Street Profits, there weren't really champions who didn't come in big in NXT. So if you look at the mm -hmm. way Undisputed Era had their debut, that wasn't big. I mean, you know, Adam came in there, boom. They, that was like the last shot of uh, those three guys, so that was quite a debut, right? Yeah. When we started um, at the PC three years ago, we started like somebody who never stepped, uh, take a step in the, uh, took a step in the ring before. Like, absolute, like, you know, mm -hmm. rookies. Because some of the guys, and you know that, like some of the Chinese guys, Indian guys, whoever, yeah. wherever they're from, they never wrestled before. Some of them haven't even seen wrestling. They yeah. have no idea who Hulk Hogan is, who Bret Hart is, who Shawn Michaels is. They don't know that. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we were one of the guys or like, yeah, we were the guys who got treated like that too. So we started, both of us were wrestling for 10 years before, right? Yeah. And we voluntarily said, dude, we're going we're gonna to start from the bottom because A, we don't really have a choice. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you, if you don't right. come yeah. in very big, like you got to work your butt off, right? Yeah. And second... And go, that goes back to the thing, things my dad taught me and Imperium preaches. It is part of the journey. There's the, you got to struggle, right? And you got to suffer and all that kind of stuff. But after that struggle and that uh, suffering, there are going to be those victories and they're gonna, there are going to be that success right there, right? So mm -hmm. for me, that moment, I didn't, I didn't think about um, no, no fans being in there. I didn't think about any, anything that happened in the match. I thought of the last three years because mm -hmm. we did everything from security to holding the cameras to building up the building the rings and everything because we wanted to do that right yeah Dude, we did so many extra sessions we built so many rings this and we never complained about it and i would never complain about it because i just that's part of the the journey for us yeah. right but we are we are one of the guys who went through all that stuff through all the stages through all the tears in the pc worked our butts off and won the titles and that was my moment it wasn't about the titles. It was about us starting from here and Robbie Brookside's class. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the very beginner's yeah. class with guys who never wrestled before, worked our butts off to get up to the point where we would get great matches, you know, against um, uh, um, Alistair, Alistair and, and Ricochet. Ricochet. Yeah. And yeah. We had a good couple of good matches here and there. And then they would yeah. use us for, like, stuff, you, uh, you and Dio. Yeah. They would know. We, yeah. we would pull off a great match, right? But it never happened on TV. It happened yeah. like somewhere in Jacksonville or this and that, which yeah. is cool, bro. We had like we had the time of our lives there. Exactly. Amazing. But that moment, that moment just gave us the good job, yeah. guys. Yep. Thank yeah. you for the work. You did did a great job the last three years. Here, here you go. And that was the, like the that reward. was the yeah. hell yeah. That was all worth it. You know. Man. So it was it was amazing. Um, should I save? I should save that one for the, for closing that out. We gonna move on to the table. Right Okay. Yeah. Keep teasing yeah, things. Yeah, keep, yeah, you know keep, about that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, man. You know, I wonder, man. I wonder. I wonder what I don't know. Um so we talked you talked a little bit about Eminem earlier, man, and about, about music. So who are some of your guys' like other top artists? Who are some people that you guys like really like? I mean, it could be from any genre. Some some people that people could 
check out like, hey, I like this person, that person. You said Eminem. Anybody else? I love Eminem. I love right. Tupac. Obviously, I love B.I.G. I love Nate Dogg. When that dog, uh, Nate Dogg died, bro, that was crazy. We that was crazy hip-hop for is all still of my not friends. recovered from it. It's still it not recovered. It is crazy. Honestly, like, um, my favorite album was Music and Me. Mm. Dude, I love this album. My my um, one of my best friends in Germany, Roman. We would listen to that to that whenever we would go out. We would listen to that uh, album like two hours before, like like oh. up and down and everything. I just I don't know the way he sounds. His voice gives me like that certain feeling. I can't even tell you. It's just like sitting down with the boys, you know, having a drink, chilling. It's just Be cool. Man. It's just you know. It's it's like yep, right there. It's flipping that switch, you know. I, I just I just love it. Dude. That one, like, I, got, that one is, got like, I got love on it. I, I got, got love. love. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Let me tell you awesome. Something. That plays awesome. on Boondocks every episode. This dude Ooh, was on yeah. your hook. <laughs> this dude was on your hook. You guaranteed a hit. Nobody does like, it better, dude. It. That's a great one. I love that one. Guaranteed a hit. Oof. This this guy laces your hook up. You like it's a cheat code. You can say anything on the verse. It don't even matter. Yep. Like you can you can you can <laughs> bat cat hat snap though. But the hook come in. That's it. Yep. That guy was, but he would he would like he would. The thing about him, he's one of the few people he would overshadow you though. Like you had to be a great rapper, yeah, yeah to yeah, even yeah. like matter, yeah, yeah with a hook yeah, yeah. like him, right? Because right, the hook right. come in, people start singing the hook, right? And Snoop had like Snoop had did his thing, and you know he rapped with a lot of West Coast guys and stuff, but he always stood out on every song he was on. It was so recognizable too, right? Yeah, I feel like his voice would always stand out. Like you could listen to like a hundred voices, but Nate Dogg's just like Snoop too. Snoop Dogg's like voice whenever you hear it, like you know, you know who it you is, you know who it is, right? You know, like so how did like it's funny how like he still managed to mesh with like an Eminem on Shake That. Uh, the shake that was a shake that. Shake that. Oh, that one. Shake that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah. These are two different chemicals that shouldn't be mixing, but somehow this guy is a, a genius. To it. It's so weird. <laughs> I but, love him. I love all this stuff. Like I said, two one three two. I love that. Two one three. The group. Uh, yeah. Uh, Snoop Dogg. Uh, Snoop Dogg. Uh, 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 Warren G. G. Warren G. Wow. Group in love. Yeah. Yeah. Was a good one. Yeah. Man. Yeah. What about uh? What about you, Fabian? What's up? Well, uh, like, obviously, like, all the stuff he just mentioned, because he got me on that. But other than that, like, I love all kinds of music, like, classics mostly. But, uh, like, I don't know, ACDC to Queen to Madonna to Phil Collins to freaking range. everything, you know, like, all that. I'm not a big fan of German music, I have to say. And don't he's trying to get there. me there, but <laughs> he, he's showing me a couple of good ones. So I'm, like, warming up a little bit to that. Getting yeah. there, slowly but surely. What is it about it that you don't like? I don't know. I just always thought like, <laughs> where, a, like, look, he just got no swag. He just swag. I just don't know. It's it's too tight. Tight. <laughs> All right, look at the swag here. Can he German? Yeah, ball, like, no, hell no. I don't know. <laughs> even I even mean, as a kid, whenever I listened to like English music, it also it always sounded cool, and I was like, I don't know. That's just like it's the right vibe, you know. Maybe because I always wanted to move here. I don't know. It was just always been something about it. You I, had like, your mind made up. You was like, five years old, no shot. Bottom line, Fabian always wanted to be American. <laughs> That's the bottom line. He's yeah. uh, coming along very well. What are some yeah, of the uh, best you guys went to a lot of any concerts? Any of your favorite concerts you guys were gone to? Oh, no. Only no. German artists, really. Only German no, artists. No, no, no American. No. This is the worst yeah. time right now for you guys because you could be hitting so many concerts, but. Yeah. I feel like I'm over that over my concert time. I like concerts. Nah, unless the Tulsa City is live, then you know that's a oh. <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. Oh yeah. So, so like, we're, so we're yeah. live. Concert. We're talking about concert. It's you like, stand there for like two yeah, three hours. Yeah. yeah, that's not my thing. Whenever I have, <laughs> whenever I have to stand somewhere for two three hours, I'm out. Like I don't, yeah, then you go to like the, the hip hop shows. Be I'm bad. the guy who sits down, and then when like my favorite song comes, I'm like hell yeah, let's go, and yeah. then I sit down again. So like, you want to like, test yeah. your love for hip hop? Uh, go to them shows where there's like six openers. You don't know who anybody is. <laughs> <laughs> you go to like, you want to stand yet? And he's no? there, and these uh, guys rapping their heart out, and these guys is trash. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, all right, let's get to the main event. I came, I came to see please, Snoop Dogg, please. and then there's just like a whole please. bunch of people, openers, local guys from the city that you don't know, <laughs> and then they might have one. Like Snoop has an artist he wants to debut. You don't care who this guy is, yeah. and then they get to Snoop, and you're like, then they get to. Jen and Juice are like, okay, I waited six hours just to get to his song. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then Snoop, I know this one. And then Snoop is tired. He gives you 30 minutes. You're like, what? <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably still worth it. Snoop, <laughs> it's still worth still it. Worth it you know? I, I yeah, stood here. Sure. Look, I, stat, I stood in front. I was front row for a 50 Cent concert, and I stood there for three hours. This man was so late, but I stood there. 
He's Snoop Dogg. I mean, he can, and it was a great show. He gets he, away with it, right? Yeah, I, well, Fifty Cent gave her a great show, a great. But I stood there in front with my homies for three hours. Whole. Are oh, you talking of, about Fifty right now? Yeah, well, I went, uh, a concert I that I went Snoop. to. Oh, okay, okay, okay. A concert that I went to. Um, it's like the live experience of seeing some of these shows. Man, it makes the music so much better because the true test of an artist a lot of times is seeing them live. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, can they can you feel that energy? Can you feel them? Mm-hmm. Can they give you a good show? Mm-hmm. Can they give you an hour like like Michael Jackson, Prince? These guys just give you an hour and a half, two hour shows. Yeah, full energy, no breaks. You know, I don't understand how that. I don't know how they did it. I don't know how like, they Michael did Jackson it. was sweating off of like first two songs. Yes, sweating, Crazy. drenched. And you look on YouTube, you see the time of the show it was like two hours. How, oh, dude? Do you, do you remember <laughs> that scene from Man in Black? Where they actually say that Michael Jackson is an alien? Yeah. I still kind of believe in that. Yeah. <laughs> still, like, it's, it's crazy. Bro, you sweat on, like, song two. We didn't even get to Thriller yet. Bro, like, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, like, those kind of guys, I'm not sure if they're entirely human, bro. <laughs> like, no. dude, like, oh. There's, there's definitely just too a good. above it. Just too good, you know? All right, so 50 versus T.I. is coming up on the IG battles. Must be 50, right? Like, for me, at least. Ooh. Like, okay, for me, at, being from Germany... Back when he, um, the album Get Rich or Die Trying, everybody had it. Everybody. He was like the coolest I, guy. He was like the coolest guy, right? The very beginning when the coin flip, I do the coin flip noise, bro. I know that whole thing. Click, clack. Click, clack. I know all, all that. Time. Many Man and all those. Yeah. Like, great. Great. Yeah. Back in that day, like, my two favorite rappers were 50 Cent and DMX. DMX, Fair. like, was probably my, my, like, my biggest hero. Like, I would watch all those movies like 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 never Axel, die Axel, alone Axel, and all yeah. Yeah. Must die was Axel great. Wounds, wounds, wounds or whatever with Angel Steve Seagal and stuff and I always thought I don't know why but I always thought that DMX is that like 6'3 super jacked guy <laughs> I'm sorry he's really, he's really not no. he's like a small dude yeah. but I always thought because he's like that tough guy and walking in he does his barking and everything he's like a, you know He's barking. <laughs> he's barking. <laughs> Dude, he's barking. He's he got to be 6'3 to bark. Jacked, you know? like, yeah, bro. To yeah. bark that way, you got to be jacked. Like, <laughs> that's what yeah, I thought. We watched that uh, Rough Riders anthem video again. Uh, he's standing on a car oh, for a yeah, reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Rough Riders. Like, yeah. He had that little <laughs> chain back in there. That's crazy. Bro. DMX oh, had God. like full belief for us short guys. He was like the sh- little man's complex like king, bro. I loved him, People bro. loved him, bro. I loved him. That loved album, him. Grand Champ. But I like I don't know like a lot of people at the time wanted to be fifty. Nobody really wanted to be Ti. I mean, look at as much. Look at fifty though. I mean, I feel like versus fifty, it was a whole wave. In in the south, in the south though, in the south, like in the south, a lot of guys was copying, bro. I'm telling you, dog. If you were here, you would have to. I I mean, there was a lot. There's a lot of this going on. You should see how many people had the ti they had in high school. Oh my god, it was bad. It was bad. I was going up. I was going to school up north, and it was like them little ugly the tank tees. Yeah, all tight like that. Everybody wore them. Couldn't fill them out. You ever try to see how your hat and it fell off? (laughs) The wind blew one night. What the? Kill my like, style. Yeah. Like there was two people like in the South areas. Uh, everybody like a lot of people copied. It was him and it was Nelly. I can't uh, not tell you how yeah. many grown yeah. men I seen with that bandaid on their face. <laughs> I'm like, fam, <laughs> you do not take that off, bro. <laughs> like I, I saw so many people with that. You know, tomorrow, tomorrow, Snoop versus DMX. That is tomorrow. So but, that's not ha- that's not official yet. Though, no, right? Fifty didn't take it. Of course not. Of course, he's gonna, he's gonna troll on Instagram. As far as longevity, Ti wins that. Yeah, really. Uh, long yeah, T.I.'s yeah. got a lot of it. As far as hits? Long, long, longevity and yeah, hits? Longevity, yeah, longevity, bro. His hits. Oh, he had like the mainstream hits though, right? I mean, yeah. Like, what, like, it's, it's gone off like 10, 15 years. It's like yeah. it's been a, a grit over yeah, a decade. His was like a good strong four. Mm. What was the other one? Snoop against who? Didn't you just say Snoop Keep against DMX or something? Huh? Did he just say Snoop against DMX or something? And Snoop and yeah. DMX, yeah, they're battling tomorrow on Instagram. Nobody can beat Snoop, right? No. Nobody can. As far as songs, Who's supposed to beat Snoop? too, yeah. Still got a stuff. lot of music, bro. We're going back to early, like mid nineties. What does DMX have? Like three, like that, like like party up. Obviously, X don't give it to you. Uh, X go, Lord, then you got to uh, then you got to go into like soundtracks thing? with like Romeo Must Die with Aaliyah oh, must, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, good, it oh, yeah. it kind of goes that way. It was uh, you got if, a if you, track, if, man. If you gotta pull out your hottest twenty, you can't pull out the number seven that nobody know about. You gotta <laughs> you gotta pull out your your best <laughs> artillery. You know what I mean? Oh, you and you and your bro love this song, but you are millions, you are millions 
with Instagram. People are like, what song is this? <laughs> you and your bro going crazy. But they're like, what are you playing? And Snoop got this round. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Totally, yeah. This is a beat I made in my basement back in the day. It was Arr, hot back then. This was hot. We're going to be just dropping like it's hot, man. Get that. This here. is me, an <laughs> elephant man. <laughs> <laughs> Beanie Man featuring. <laughs> It, um, I'm trying to think of like a po- think of a post 2010 DMX song that's a hit post 2010 oh, wasn't he all like locked up like after 2005 or something uh, whatever I googled it? him he was always in prison so I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but post 2010 it's like Snoop can go on for a while yeah, he did like a lot of pop sensual things, like, seduction. Yeah, like even like, Katy Perry and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everybody on social media is like, if he you always play, kept doing stuff somewhere. Like, he always, always kept. You can put more stuff somewhere, there. somewhere <laughs> man. Yeah. Everybody was like, if he plays sensual seduction, God bless DMX and what he plays like, after uh, that, because <laughs> it's gonna be hard to top that. <laughs> <laughs> Dog gonna who bite. Did he, who did he close line against, Snoop Dogg? He close lined somebody, right? Who did he close line against? Probably Chavo Guerrero, because he's the one that always got Chavo, beat up. Right? Who was Chavo, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I think it was Chavo. Chavo yeah, he's always the one that got beat up by celebrities. I love that. Like yeah. how people who are not wrestlers, they get ready for it. You can see it in their eyes. Like okay. This is my moment. They get ready for 15 seconds and then they do it like in a half a second. It's just uh, funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter what Snoop, uh, Snoop does though. He's always, always yeah. style, always cool. Who, who's your who, quick, quickly? Who's your who's your greatest? Who's like your goat? Your number one of all time? Like that person is that person. He has M. Um, you know who? Uh, uh, my goat is Kanye. Oh, it's Kanye, just, Kanye. It's, but it's rough. I feel like when it comes to that gimmick aspect I was talking about, it's Eminem. I feel like when it's when it comes about like to being almost like a preacher, almost like a poet, it's Tupac. <laughs> There, there's not a beat in the world where B.I.G. is not uh, coming in. Everybody's like, oh, sh-. So when, it, when you talk about flow, I guess, yeah. nobody beats uh, Biggie, in my opinion. Like pure talent, he was amazing. Uh, when it comes to, like, just me, like, my personal tastes, um, I, I'd probably say Tupac, just because I'm always more, with Imperium, same thing, more about the craft itself, like, more about the skill, more about the... Oh, Not so much about the delivery, but more about the yeah, well, the craft itself. You know, break his heart about the Tupac analysis. Okay, Oof. don't kill me. Oof. Let me get ready. Oh, let me, <laughs> oh, let me get okay. ready. Let right. My first uh, Swedish fish. Now, home. this is this is the thing, right? As a as a guy who loves this, we we break things down and like we look at like flaws of everyone. Because everyone has them. Right. Yeah. Who, uh, yeah. Everyone has them, right? So, me and my friend one day was having this long conversation. And I was like, man, Pac did this, Pac did that, Pac did this. And then he was like, what didn't he do? <laughs> and then, one day he was like, Pac is notorious for putting the homies on the track. And you have no idea who these people are. Pac would just put anybody on a song. And make a song about anything. What's your song? What you said? You said, kill them all. That's the name of the song. You spit the hook. We gonna rap about whatever. And I'm gonna rap my verse. And that's it. Mm, just to get the uh, project done. People right, would right. feel that, like, he would have strong records. Mm-hmm. Like a Dear Mama. So maybe- Brenda's got a baby. But then it could be a couple of ones on the album where it's just everywhere. <laughs> You know what I mean? Hennessy till I die. Till I die, Pop. Yeah, I told you, Pop. And you're like, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what, what's his name? I, I, I never thought about that. Well, yeah. And then, so, and then everybody on the feature always had to co-sign Pop. Everybody yeah, had to yeah. big him up. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, and then, like, then they end up on Vlad interviews, like, five years later. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, I was around when Pac was like, who, where? where? <laughs> like, yeah, when on the, on the, the security tape, I was right there with the red shoes, yeah. <laughs> I, I said, I said, homie, on that one track. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, man, I was, you know, I was on and that track. interviews from it. I'm like, why is it so, yeah, those views? On the yeah. They was like, you know, well, yeah, once Pac left the studio, I just, you know, I just laid my verse, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's like, like, Pac gone? All right, here, go. Then Pac, you know, he didn't know it was on the album, but I put it on there, I let my verse on, you know what I'm saying? But that was like, that was something about the, the Tupac analogy was like how great he was when he was focused. A focused Tupac mm-hmm. was remarkable. Mm-hmm. But he was, he would, he would go into the the rush syndrome where he would just pick stuff yeah, and yeah, just yeah. get the album done. Right. But like that's why people say like me against the world, the album before he went to jail. Right. The first time. Yeah. yeah. 
was like his best body of work. That was his most focused before he knew he was. That was the one that had Dear Mama on it. And right. You try meeting these red record label deadlines with Suge Knight above your shoulder. I know you have like a yeah. you have like you you have you got like, thirty days. Uh, get on the get on the song. Come on, a, rap. That's what. But that's the same thing they would say about like a Prince though. Prince would drop an album every year. And you're like, bro, what? What? Like, do you have that much to talk about? <laughs> like, from like so from 1980, 1978 to 1990, he dropped an album every year, at least that's ten wow. songs. Music. Crazy, yeah. There's too much music. That's Obviously, so like much. if the quantity goes up that much, like the quality is going to suffer. You're on some tour. Point. You're already so, on yeah, tour sure. six but months out the, the year. end of the day, at the end of the day, who's talking about those? People will always pick their top five, right? right? People will always right. pick like I don't know, Gangster Party. Will always like Little to My Unborn Child and like Changes and like all that kind yeah. of stuff, right? You know? But his, so, yeah, his 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 singles were so strong, yeah. That but, that would, yeah, but yeah, the, yeah, no. it'd be on a 25 song album. <laughs> yeah, 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 number yeah. one, Hennessy. Number two, yeah, Misery. Skip, 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 skip. <laughs> we got the pressure right there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he yeah, well, uh, an amazing. I wish the one thing I do wish was I wish they both was alive. They really get Biggie and Pac on the same song after all oh, that ended, my God. and to after all the problems ended. And for them to at the, when they were young, because they both were twenty five when they passed. That's another thing. They were so young. They were. Yeah. They, you really yeah, think about it. Like I'm so thirty one. I'm like, yo, they were so much kids, up to that bro. Point. Yeah. Imagine they, what they, they could have done. You know, like man, go. the whole lo- world yeah. was like looking at them. Right. It was so crazy. So much pressure and everything. Yeah. Dude, and like crazy. for a kid at, from Germany, by the way, like thinking about what life those guys lived is just unimaginable. To me. Because those guys yeah. were actually afraid to get shot outside. Or were not because oh. he would just mess around everywhere and get shot. Like He, would, he got shot, shot twice, twice, right? Once in that elevator thing, and Mike Tyson it, fight was the lethal one. I was think. the lethal one, yeah. Right? And then he got shot before, right? After he, uh, yeah. after that, he got the uh, hit him up yeah. uh, song, mm. right? He got grazed. Yeah, he got grazed by a bullet. And exactly. Then, that, that he Why healed. bullets even flying? Dude, that's like crazy to me. It's that crazy because everybody that knows him would be like, oh, he got shot, he'll be all right. That's crazy. What do you say that, that about was a somebody? normal thing. That's how you know you're like Superman. Oh, Michael yeah. survive. He'll be all right. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> like, Meg the Stein got shot yesterday. What are you talking about? <laughs> that is crazy. I remember like back in the day in the school, people would ask you like, you're East Coast or West Coast? Bro. Like, Ger- Germany, right? Midwest. That's ridiculous. Like, I have no idea who's West Coast. I have no idea who's East Coast. But apparently back in the day, you would get beat up if you're East Coast. Like, so, I don't know why. Oh, I can't your, tell you like, why. You with your I cannot tell you, but like, like oh, you East Coast? Bah, 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 bah. Like, you, live, like, you live with your grandmother on the South Side. Why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> like, what if you don't go to school? Like, if you don't go to like, Especially in Germany, we n- where nobody ever held a gun in their hand or anything, you know? Like, so, you know. But what I wanted to say is just to me, it's crazy how those young men, 25 um, lived a life and I think like in fear sometimes probably he lived like, the life that, of a 40 year old 50 year old that's man that's crazy yeah. at 25. that is so crazy to me not right? to mention he was so good at acting too well he always he always seemed fine right whenever he had like I think no like, no, like actual movies he was good oh, in that too movies? Yeah. All right. I've never seen the two part movie I think oh Juice Poetic Justice go watch juice. it it's on Netflix now um, uh, 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 Juice I would say Gridlock I think Juice you go to you go to Juice yeah. you go to Juice that's this is a yeah Juice is his best this performance. Is poetic justice with Juice is his, Juice is his best performance. I've seen a Snoop Dogg movie, Car Wash. So Car Wash. Look, let's, do like, ah. on movies. Ah. let's do a versus on rapper movies. Which one is it? Half Baked with uh, Chappelle? Who, what rappers in that? What rappers in that? The Chappelle and Snoop Dogg. But it's, it's mostly Dave Chappelle's uh, movie. Yeah. And Half Baked. Yeah. Half Where's Snoop at? Yeah. Uh, he's just in a cameo role. I don't remember it. See, to me that was great back in the day. I like yeah. it. I have no idea. Oh, you, know, you know, you know, back in the days, back in the early two thousands, it'd be like every rapper would get jacked and be in like a horror movie. Yeah, <laughs> Buster was in Halloween, bro. Is that, uh, I'm was... not letting that go. Yeah, I'll never let that go. He did. He gave, he gave him the pause. Mm. Buster was another one, by the way. I love Buster. Buster's incredible. Buster awesome. An incredible. Awesome man. videos too. Him Dude, and Missy, bro. Videos. Him yeah, and Missy Elliott, bro. They were crazy. they are in a stage by themselves when it comes to music videos. Awesome. I love them. Yeah. Especially as features. What was the Mariah Mariah Carey one? Was I know it, what you want. Was the exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah awesome. man. Awesome stuff. It's about time we wrap this up, because we gotta get y'all out of here. Um uh, man, I wanted to bring this up earlier, but I think this is always better to do this at the end of the show when we wrap things up. We always talk about 
things that y'all had to over- overcome. You discussed making it to NXT, winning the WWE NXT Tag Championships together, but you had your lows as well. What are some lows that you can talk about if you're comfortable with that you can just reminisce and remember fondly and then discuss getting out of that? What were the things you had to do? The things you had to, like, the, what are some advice for anybody that's listening and watching that maybe have gone through some things themselves? What are some things that they could do? Like, maybe you can inspire them to get out of what they're going through at the moment right now. Because this is a really down time with how the world's going. People losing jobs, people losing their minds, being in home in quarantine, people losing family members with COVID. You know, so what are some inspirational words you'd say, but like, from personal experiences coming out of your lows? I mean, to me, I always looked at it kind of like sometimes, like, we all have been through like a period of time where just like everything just doesn't seem to click right it's just yeah. that goes wrong this goes wrong and you just like feel like everything's going that way it's just domino effects exactly yeah it just keeps happening man and then like i don't know i always kind of looked at it as like the life's way of testing you like how bad do you want it you know are you gonna get through this or like what are you gonna do it's sink or swim so i just always thought like if you just grit your teeth i know it's hard sometimes like in the moment obviously but if you just like grit your teeth and like think about why you're doing what you're doing and just keep going, keep going, die, go day by day. And like, I'm a very positive person. I think that helps just like, I don't know, see the glasses half full and just keep grinding. Like eventually the tide's going to turn and then just good things are going to keep mm-hmm. happening. That's what I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel keep grinding. And, um, Sean Michaels actually said something to us, which, uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Stop worrying about things, uh, that you can't control or that you don't control, right? Yeah. Some things you can't, they're not in your hands. And you can't control some things. You know, stop stop worrying about those. I feel like, just like you just said, um, never stop grinding and just um, work your butt off. Because at the end of the day, even if uh, things not going to turn out as you want them to turn out, you still did everything you could, right? Yeah. Couldn't have done a better job. So I feel like, I always looked at it that way. If I... At my la- in my last day, in my last day of my life, I can say, hey, man, I tried everything, you know, I couldn't have done a better job, then I'm happy, you know, yeah. because all the other things you can't control. As they say, you know, you, you, can, you can't control how the river runs, you can't, you can paddle, you can do all the paddling, you can try to control the, the current all you want to, but at some point you're going to have to have some faith, and then right. that's it. Right. It's going to rely on faith. And I feel like if you believe in that, right. you know, and if you try yeah. to be a good human being, I feel like everything happens for a reason, everything is going to come to you eventually absolutely not always when you want it right away but you know so mm-hmm. far everything has turned out pretty good you know mm-hmm. and it's going to it's going to get better we're in a hard time right now we just gotta once again we got it we're in a grit our teeth mo- moments right, right. For it's sure. not going to be forever I pray to god it's not going to be forever but i have faith it's not right yeah. we got to grit our teeth and we got to push forward <laughs> we're going to get through this and one way you can get through this and help pass the time and maybe motivate yourself is listening to these guys on the Swerve City Podcast. There's only one place you can listen to it. YouTube.com backslash Swerve City Podcast on YouTube. Subscribe and pledge on Patreon if you want to get these episodes early, a couple days early for everybody else. Go to Patreon.com backslash Swerve City Podcast. Where can they find you on social media? Plug your stuff. So for me, it's just Fabian.Eichner, WWE, on both uh, Instagram and Twitter. Give us a follow. Uh, we're always happy to interact with our fans, and uh, I'll see you there. Yeah. All right. Marcel.Bartel.WWE. And a new Imperium rap album coming soon, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. We're about to drop the hottest Shout out Rich Ladder, <laughs> producer. Yes. Producing a new album. Yes, sir. Producing yes, a new sir. album, GPS. Yes, slash sir. Erica Sun coming, coming this fall. Coming this fall, man. Uh, Mike, you put up the graphic real quick, my dog. Yeah, you that show, that should be a default. Just bow. You know what I mean? Right <laughs> like, End of every episode. You know what I mean? We put we, we we just dropped a new single. You know what I mean? We just dropped a new classic. We have there's currently two singles out right now for the album Black Boy, which you guys saw in the last episode uh, with the Ruby Riding MVP that came out a couple weeks ago. And then, right after that, one zero eight seven seven one six two. I have to look at it every time because I can't remember it. We uh, dropped. You'll get there. Well, I'll get there. We dropped this uh, this this beauty off the off the um, GPS part of the album. 
you guys, please go check that out. It was an amazing thing. My brother shined on this record. I'm very, very proud of him. He killed this. And um, it is an amazing, amazing song. Make sure you guys go to all digital platforms. You know, your iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. You know what I mean? It's only 99 cents. I mean, you can just, you know, come on now. You guys can't spend a dollar? Spend dollars on worse, you know what I mean? And cop the and cop the stream it, share it, like it, all that. We appreciate it. You know what I mean? You can't find it. It's on the source of the YouTube. Uh, twi- YouTube, Twitter, IG. Check it out. Check it out, man. So, nice so you guys support what we have going on, and uh, we thank you, and we appreciate you. And as always, be confident in everything you do. Wash your ass. Or you're going to get a pop-up. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>